I am here with my colleague Erica Jones, who you know from Somerville Media Center, but what maybe. you maybe <laughs> what you may not know is that Erica is a individual who wears many hats, and one of them is over at the Somerville Growing Center. Mm -hmm. And what is it that you do over there exactly? What is it? Um, so. Technically, I am the volunteer coordinator over there, and um, it's a little hidden gem. Um, we don't have a lot of green space in Somerville, so I love to just kind of amplify, like, hey, get out there. It's a quarter acre uh, urban garden oasis, and um, my role is just to kind of connect different people in and around Somerville with the space. Um, help orient them to the space, so doing orientations, and then getting them set up so they can host their own events, because 99% of the um, Growing Center is managed by volunteers. So that's a lot of programming that's done by people who are just doing it for the love of doing it, which is awesome. Yeah. And incredibly impressive. Um, so I'm trying just to make sense of what's your idea? You want to come and do like a comic book fair there? Awesome. Let's like talk about what that could look like. Oh, is there a comic book fair? There's not. Oh, but there's not. Hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm speaking to your own passion. Ah, here. okay. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of different types of events that um, take place uh, at the Growing Center. It's been around since 1994. And uh, not many people know about it or they're often like, oh, I've walked by it, but I've never really sure like what's going on in there kind of similar to here where people are like oh i've been walking by for like 10 years and today was a day that i wanted to like come in so um basically you want to make sure that the space is open as often mm. as possible and volunteers help us uh do that by hosting different events we throw up our welcome flag and then curious neighbors and families or people with their dogs or whoever come by and they're like What's going on here? Oh, there's music, or there's yoga, or there's a garden planting day. Um, or movies. Or movies that happen that Somerville Media Center puts on. Um, so there's a good variety of programs that happen, made possible by our wonderful volunteers, um, so other people can be just kind of, I don't know, enjoy the space, get out of the urban the urban, uh, you know, jungle here and be around some like buzzing bees or some, I don't know, birds or sometimes bats. <laughs> and there's also a garden cat. <laughs> All right. If you want to be around cats and bats this, <laughs> this summer evenings, go to the garden center. <laughs> yes. Um, not often are there bats, but yeah. sometimes during uh, movie nights, we do see a sweeping movement dark a dark shadow and they make that noise like yeah yeah so once you hear those clicks you <laughs> just, know just duck down a little just, bit <laughs> <laughs> you know there's some bats in the area <laughs> yeah so somerville bats bats cats rats that's, <laughs> That's... Not many. I haven't seen many rats there, so. Okay, good. But... No, no, no. Not rats in the growing center, just like Somerville. In general, in general. Yeah. yeah not, not a good trio, necessarily. But... Yeah. So, uh, what are some of the events that are happening this July? We were looking at the calendar earlier, and yeah. there are quite Black a jam. few of them. Yeah. Anything you want to highlight? Absolutely. So, um, this year, uh, we have a great... Um, selection of series events so events that happen obviously um you know concurrently or just like once a month or, or even twice a month so we have um earthwise nature series which is really great and again this is all brought to you by volunteers um and we have a bird identifying workshop coming up Ooh. so you can come to the growing center and uh, basically come and learn about um, birds classifications and um, there's also some sketching to it as well so you can sit there and, and sketch some of the birds as well um, cool. but really sort of just like observing and practicing how to um, be still and also how to listen to certain sounds and the woman who's teaching it i think can identify like 70 plus or maybe even more like Whoa. Sounds of birds. Wow. Yeah. So um, expand your brain. This is great for all ages. So families can come, adults. I'm going to try to participate. Um, and so, yeah, limited limited spaces for this, but um, a free, cool workshop that people can take advantage of. And then there's more um, events 
put on by the same group throughout the summer. So you can always, everything that we're discussing today can be checked out at thegrowingcenter.org. Um, but this is a good one uh, to highlight, and that's on July 8th. July 8th, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Sunday for all, July. for all you birders or exactly. a, of any level, like amateur to pro. Exactly. Oh yeah, yeah. Everything is is all all skills, all interests. Um, and and there's there's yeah. like a serious birder community out here, right? Yeah. Well, I guess being in uh, Mass Audubon, you know, is I think based somewhere in like the greater Boston area, and they put on a lot of great um, events as well for like the greater like environmental um, kind of uh, group of people. But but yeah, I think just in general with like foliage and all that stuff, there's just a lot of interest of people being outdoors and wanting to, to learn more. I know that my Nana would always um, walk around with like the birds of North America book. Mm. So she passed that on to me and was like, you know, learn. So I feel like I have to do yeah. due diligence. <laughs> yeah. To up my bird gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I know Robin's really well on blue jays and bluebirds. <laughs> I think you need to up your game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pigeons, part of the rock dove family. I, what's, uh, like, yeah, we can talk dove, about that anyways. later. Wow. So lots to learn. Maybe you can come. Maybe you want to come out to this. Um, sorry, I'm not sure which one over here. Um, <laughs> uh, we're on two come. right now. Everyone I think, yeah. coming. <laughs> um, Labyrinth Walks Labyrinth. is another uh, series that happens there. So is, is the garden large enough to have a labyrinth? There's a decent sized labyrinth that was installed by the Somerville High School um, back in, I think maybe like 10 to 12 years ago, maybe even more. Um, uh, this woman, Katrina, another dedicated volunteer comes and uh, leads a a kind of spiritual guided, you know, guided um, walk through the labyrinth. It's very, it's not involved. It's not like in an elaborate labyrinth that you might think of, but. I, w I like, so you're not gonna get lost. No, or not at all. forgotten about <laughs> for like days. No, the labyrinth Darn. is literally, um, <laughs> is literally uh, set apart by like bricks buried into the earth. Oh, that's cool. So you are very much like, you're not, you're not gonna get lost. Um, and if you do, Garden Cat will help you. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, Labyrinth Walks. There's all sorts of great music that happens um, in the garden that um, a handful of volunteers put on. Um, we just had She Boom in there, and that brought in a great selection of people. Um, really focuses on kind of the great, fantastic uh, diversity of music that um, kind of takes shape here within Somerville, but also like around the greater Somerville area. Um, specifically, we have coming up uh, in July um, a musical sing-along, so you can come and, and enjoy um, a cool kind of like, it's a nice like inclusive circular environment and people can sit on the amphitheater, um, you know, grassy area and they're just going to be playing a bunch of musical sing-alongs. Okay. Not sure which ones. I think that may be up for um, anticipation to drive in the curiosity. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, good old fashioned. Uh, you know, fun with that. There's gonna be a jazz vocalist and yeah, singing a bunch of popular uh, uh, musical songs. And often cool. they have a bunch of um, uh, a bunch of instruments that people who are in the crowd can like play along with too. So it's interactive and it's not just like you know just listening. I mean, listening is a part of it, but you can decide. And it's great for like little little ones too. And what day is that? Um, that is going to be on July 19th, Thursday. Okay, cool. So right before one of our uh, Cinema Somerville outdoor movies. Yes, let's talk about Which, Cinema Somerville. Which, let's dive into that Segway. one. Segway. Segway. Um, so we have been putting on, um, Somerville, we, Somerville Media Center, has been putting on a outdoor movie series for the last, I think, four years now. Um, and it's been over at the growing center and they've been mostly focused on um, like classic classic you know public domain films um, you know some kooky eccentric films but this year we're looking at um, themes so for July we're doing all food justice um, short films and that is made possible by a wonderful organization called real food films and they basically um, have funding that allows them to get educational or nonprofit organizations to screen their work for the public. Um, 
there's at least eight to ten different short films that'll be shown for each Thursday in July. But the goal is that we'll do a picnic at uh, seven. Uh, 7.30, and then once it's dusk out, we'll start screening the movies. But um, everything from looking at, um, you know, vineyards and, f and urban farm life to composting to, um, uh, you know, the habitat in um, the ocean and how plastic is affecting that. So there's a lot of different um, specific short films that focus all around food justice uh, themes. And that's um, in partnership with Groundwork Somerville. Which is another great local, uh, fantastic nonprofit organization that Summerville Media Center and the Summerville Community Growing Center both work pretty closely with. Um, and all those, like the full list of the movies, can be found at um, our website or the Growing Center's website, which I'm sure there's going to be a link shown on the screen right now. It, it's it's showing right now. It's, it's right now. It's right. <laughs> It's right, Here. it's right there, <laughs> right there. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about sort of spicing up uh, the Cinema Summer of Outdoor movies with the with the environmental themed, and then August will bring us some, kind of bring back the whole classic film, uh, black and white, maybe some Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, so that is TBD, so look for the listing soon. Very cool. Yeah. So. And I should add that um, the Cinema Somerville uh, food justice series mm -hmm. films yes. will be shown in case you miss it they will be shown um, all on scat tv Yay! in august so cross promotional love <laughs> synergy synergy <laughs> synergy um anything else yeah, that so you want to add so we, so as you can tell there's a larger theme of like the programming that happens at the growing center it's like arts culture um just community building and is trying to get people to the space um, to relax and to learn. So Poetry in the Garden has been a new series, um, again, organized by one of our volunteers. And July 11th will be another one um, at 6.30, Poetry Readings by uh, Elizabeth Bradfield, Ralph Penny, and Kiran Kapoor. Um, and then there's more series that happens in August and September. So again, that full listing is on the Growing Center's website. Um, and there's so many more things that happen. So like much more. Yoga, if you want to do yoga in the garden. I think there's like a pajama event. Pajama, yeah, pajama yeah. story time. There's there's just so much going on, and unfortunately we don't have time to like delve into all of it here. Sure. There's an awesome, great looking calendar Which on the website. See. Right right there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so if you if you've been to the space um, and love it, and if you haven't been, it's at 22 Vinyl Lab. Exactly, yep. Right, right on the outskirts of Union Square. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a fun space. Check it out at any one of these uh, events. Yep. And maybe you'll run into Erica. And, and Garden Cat. You might see Garden and Cat Garden too. Cat, Garden Bat, <laughs> Garden... <laughs> no Garden Rats though. <laughs> no Garden Rats. Uh, uh, yeah, cool. Cool, yeah. So uh, check it all out. Cool. Thanks, Thanks Erica. Yay! It's July in Somerville, and you know what that means. It means Art Beat in Davis Square, one of the premier events of the season, as put on by the good people at Somerville Arts Council. This year, Art Beat is Saturday, July 14th, from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Davis Square will be closed off to traffic and open up to foot traffic, uh, d just to let space for a dozen bands over two stages, dance troops, 75 craft vendors, food, and all ages activities. This year's Art Beat theme is Flip, and it's a celebration of all things upside down, backwards, and sideways. Flip evokes many things, including rapid change, inverting the status quo, changing your mind, flipping a coin, or turning the whole world upside down. Perhaps it's time to flip a switch, literally or figuratively. Are there things that you want to that make you want to flip out? Well, check out the event page for updates as we get closer to July 14th. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. I know Somerville Media Center will have a presence there, so look out for our booth. If you're a literary type that loves beer, you may want to check out Books and Brews on July 17th. That's a Tuesday. And it occurs every third Tuesday 
uh, at Aeronaut Brewing Company as a collaboration between Aeronaut Brewing Company and the Somerville Public Library. It will take place from 6.15 to 7.15. The July selection is Lab Girl by Hope Jaron. If you are interested, uh, there's still time. Copies of the book are available at all three locations of the Somerville Public Library. Uh, stop by the circulation desk, ask them for the Books and Brews book, and uh, they will get you one of the reserved copies. More information can be found at SomervillePublicLibrary.org. <laughs> With me now in the studio is Sarah from the World Naked Bike Ride Boston. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Some Arts. Thank you. Um, and Scat TV. This is your first time in the studio? It is. It's my first time here. Oh. And wonder what's in this building. Now I know. Now you know. Yeah. Um, and we encourage uh, viewers to do the same. So World Naked Bike Ride Boston is in its ninth year. Um, and you are actually one of the founding organizers of the, the bike ride. Um, yeah. Why don't we talk about how it got started? The actual World Naked Bike Ride, I think, started um, back in 2001 or 2002 in um, Canada. And it was just like a general protest ride for um, safer streets. Uh, also, I think just a little bit fun. Uh, and it really took off. And by 2008, I was um, spending a lot of time in Portland, Oregon. And a lot of my friends were in the bike scene there. And their naked bike ride at that time was almost like a thousand people. Whoa. Yeah, and it was huge, and it was like so exciting um, to hear about all the time. And unfortunately, I didn't get to go on their naked bike ride, but we had like impromptu naked bike rides. Portland, Oregon was just kind of like was more hip to bikes before Boston, I mm -hmm. guess, a little bit. Um, <laughs> so it was just really fun. And I kept going out there for these bike events and just to hang out. And then I was like, why are we just not having these in Boston? There was something, you know, like the um, uh, critical mass ride in Boston at the time, but it was like a really aggressive kind of protest ride and mm. it wasn't really my jam. Um, and so I finally convinced a bunch of friends to Start the Boston one with me, and I think there was like eight or ten of us at the beginning. Cool. Yeah. So you mentioned that it was a that it started off as a protest ride. Yep. Um, and and it has those origins. Mm -hmm. Is it still a protest ride? Yeah. So um, and it's actually evolved in a few different ways, kind of um, for other social reasons besides biking. Um, when I first started the ride, it was really about bike safety on the streets. Um, and so the vulnerability of being naked and being really visible to people kind of like shocks people when they see you riding by naked that like, wow, this is how vulnerable we are on the streets. And it's kind of just like a, hey, we're here. We really like need you and the community and drivers and pedestrians and other bikers to really understand how dangerous it is out here. and like kind of let's get together and create a safer space for bikers. Um, so that's where it started originally. Um, and now it's kind of expanded, as you would think, into more of a body positivity protest ride to um, really allowing people a safe space to come and be nude around other people, which is something that you don't normally experience. Um, and being around a community of like-minded individuals who really support that and then also support the fun and adventure of biking and the freedom that biking gives you um, kind of highlights the freedom that being naked in public kind of makes you feel. Um, so yeah, so it's taken a few forms. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about being naked in public. Um, it, it's illegal. Yes, it is illegal. <laughs> Nobody go outside don't, naked. Please. Don't go outside right now like, naked. Don't advise it. It's still please. illegal. Yes. Um, so about that Ill illegal nature of it. What what's the relationship between you and um, the Boston police? Um, what's what's that evolved into? Yeah. So originally, um, I have a science background, and um, I come from like a career of working in like labs with a lot of rules. And now I'm actually a safety director for my my job. Um, Congratulations. So thank you. <laughs> so um, safety is a big priority for me and so starting the ride even with just eight of my friends I was really concerned about you know what could potentially happen to us what's the worst outcome and I actually did those first two years contact the Boston Cambridge and Somerville police forces um, and kind of reach out and say this is happening this is a protest 
test ride. So um, just so everyone understands, there is this rule where if it is for protesting purposes, nudity is, in quotations, allowed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's a very vague rule. Um, it can definitely go either way. Um, but after those first two years, the, all the police forces were kind of just basically said, no, you can't do it. So, um, and I was more just not asking their permission, but letting them know. Um, so we ended up just stop, stopping all communication with police. Um, and actually that worked to our benefit because the year that we stopped communicating with the police, they actually came out, especially the Cambridge police, they're really good about this. They came out and started escorting us through red lights and keeping us together. And I think in their mind, they just want to get us out of the city as quick as possible. Right. Um, <laughs> so, but actually, that actually helps us stay safer. Um, so we've had really positive experiences with the police in general, Boston police, Cambridge police, um, though they do get uh, a little more upset with us when the ride ends and we're hanging out in a park naked. Right, uh, yes. They really want us to wrap it up as quickly as possible. Um, uh, and wrap ourselves up, literally. <laughs> um, but but yeah, generally, you know, we haven't had too many issues. Yeah. And uh, what about keeping the ride uh, a safe space outside of you know the the police concerns? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's pretty vulnerable to be naked. It's extremely. And, and out out in public and on a bike. Um, it is. It is. Over over many miles. <laughs> yeah. Um, like my mindset was, the faster we can finish the ride and keep everybody together, the the less trouble we'll get into. Um, I wasn't really good at organizing and getting like a group of people together. Like soon that started evolving naturally, where people opted to volunteer, and we would have like someone in the back to keep the ride together, someone in the front, and then we ended up, I think, in our third or fourth year, having walkie talkies to like communicate all all around. But I was still not really that that um, that great at organizing in general. And luckily, um, a few people who had been going on the rides and just really loved trying to create this more formal safe space mm -hmm. for people um, finally got together. And um, Rick and Ellen are two key people on Val who um, over the past definitely two years and three years, I think even Rick was like four years ago helping me out. Um, our friend John as well. Um, they really helped like establish a set of code and conduct for That's the ride, which is really important. And we've created a website. And actually, my friend Carl from Portland, um, who was a big part of the Portland Naked Bike Ride, which is now up to 9,000 people. Whoa. Um, and he was a huge organizer for that. He now lives here. So we get him in Boston, which is nice. And he's now been helping out with the ride. He helped last year. And so people will probably notice who have been going on it for years that it's much more organized, that we have the website, it has the rules up there. Um, we ask for volunteers now. Our Facebook page actually has posts, um, things that I just couldn't keep up with on my own. So it's really the volunteer force that now is just like getting it going. And uh, Ellen and um, Rick and Val really helped establish that code of conduct, which is available on the website. So if you go to www.wnbr, so World Naked Bike Ride, but WNBR Boston, Dot com. That's where all the ride information is and the general code of conduct. Um, we do have to reiterate that this is completely voluntary. Um, unfortunately, we can't be liable for, for anybody's safety directly. Sure. Um, and everybody is kind of taking it into their own hands mm. when they join the ride and get fully nude or as bare as they dare. As bare as they dare. Yeah. So as bare as they dare, that's interesting. So you don't have to be fully nude. No. As bare as you dare. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> that's what it means. That's kind of amazing from the start. Um, some of my friends who originally went on the ride were very uncomfortable yeah. uh, at first with getting naked because one, there was only eight of us or ten of us, I forget. Um, and two, it wasn't a thing in Boston. So you never just see naked people in Boston. It's not like, oh, there's naked bike riders, like again, you know. Um, and so we did this. The first ride was mostly Boston naked, as we like to call it, which is just in your underwear. It's like... <laughs> still, still risque, but yeah. like more conservative and Puritan, like our Boston roots. Um, but finally, more and more people started coming out and just being like fully naked. Here I am. So, so yeah, that's been a, a cool part of the ride too. 
What advice do you have for somebody who hasn't participated in the bike ride who maybe wants to try this year? Yeah, um, just show up. Like that's the number one thing, just show up. If you have to rent a bike, borrow somebody's bike, um, it's worth it. Um, it's a really amazing community of people. Last year, I think we had definitely over 250 people. Maybe we reached 300, the stats are on the webpage, but um, it's just, Everybody's there to have a good time. Um, though obviously we're not screening the participants, people who tend to seek this type of ride out usually are doing it for the right reasons. Um, and it's a really su supportive community. And um, the volunteers there are there to help you know, guide you and, and make you feel safe. So if it's your new, uh, if, if it's your first time and it's a new ride for you, just, just find a volunteer. We'll be easy to find. We'll be wearing a flag of some sort. Um, and just say like, hey, this is my first time. And we will take you on our wing. And like, you can ride with us up front or ride with us in back if that's where you feel more comfortable. Um, but you will make new friends, I promise that. That's, that's awesome. And that's what the whole thing is about. Yeah. Uh, community building, yeah. meeting like-minded people, and even some not so like-minded people, and, and just coming together under the umbrella of biking together yeah. naked. It, it inspires people in certain ways to just, yeah, think outside the box a little bit. Cool. World Naked Bike Ride Boston on July 21st. See you there. Thanks for watching Some Arts. On behalf of Somerville Media Center, Somerville Community Access Television, and Some Arts, I'm Dave. If you're an event producer and you want to see it promoted on this show, give me an email right there. And otherwise, have a great summer. Keep safe. Be nice. Thank mm -hmm. you.